All right, so good evening everyone and welcome to today's Blue Sky Talk. So before we begin, I'd like to wish all the lovely women a belated Happy Women's Day. So uh, last year for Women's Day, we had a panel discussion and we had women from all walks of life talking about how they're challenging stereotypes. So uh, this year, we're going to talk about an uh, issue which is fairly widespread but sadly doesn't get enough coverage. So uh, it's uh, reported that every eight minutes, a little girl in India goes missing. And this is uh, something really difficult to stomach. And uh, what makes it worse is that these little girls are as young as nine years old when they uh, get caught into the prostitution and sex trafficking racket. So uh, today we have uh, Ms. Lena Kejriwal here with us, who's uh, going to be talking about uh, the state of the situation in India and her efforts to change it with uh, the, her art and awareness campaign called Missing. So over to you, Lena. Hello. Hi. It's nice to see you all here. Um, I'm an artist, so I'm not a public speaker, so you'll see me reading from this. But I'm very passionate about what I'm doing. And he did say, I'm going to tell you how to tackle this. I'm not going to tell you how. I'm going to just tell you what I'm doing. And I would like you all to feel the same empathy and uh, the intense vulnerability of these little girls. And I hope that feeling gets transformed into something else in the future. So, um, Missing is a public art and awareness campaign and it started because as a photographer I used to go explore spaces, like I know there are a lot of photographers here who like to explore the city and that's what I used to do, the socio-economic, the portraits of the people in the city and one such kind of jaywalking led me into a red light and that's an experience which I couldn't leave because what you see there is intense, at least it was intense for me. And that led me into exploring more about the issue of the girls in the red light and where do they come from, who are they. We all know they are not supposed to be there, but we avert our eyes towards it. But I think it's something which we should stop doing. And just like how you are concerned about where your vegetables are coming from, as simple as that, I think we all need to be concerned about where are these girls coming from. because. Um, this is offhand actually. So like we all have seen that the violence against women is increasing and the statistics show that the average age of a girl, young girl going into prostitution has increased 133 percentage in 2013-14 which is I thought unbelievable. We all are supposed to be more civilized. There is education happening all around and there's more emancipation. So why should this kind of figures increase? I do believe even Koramangla is a very unsafe place to be around at night. Somebody just told me last week when I was in Cal. Is that true? It's unsafe? You can't be out at after 9 o'clock? Isn't that strange? You are in Bangalore. You are in a major city of India and you can't be safe. Now this is something which I think is abnormal. And this is increased last few years, it's not decreased. So something is wrong in our education system. Law and order has been the same. In fact, the police is working harder only. So what's bringing this change? Missing as a project, I do, I have started as trying to create empathy towards the situation. So I'm just going to take you through like a little bit more about the issue and then we can just move on. This is a short PSA which we made for explaining the issue.
these girls are actually given hormones so that they can become and look bigger than what they are. And till they are 18, they are not even out on the streets of a red light because they are inside. So you might say you don't see them, but they are there. And there are buyers to them. And we as a public are important stakeholders in this. I'm going to be telling such an intensive stuff. I don't know you all were prepared for such an intensive afternoon, but I'm, I don't apologize. We all have to agree to be a part of it. So we do know sex trafficking is a heinous crime that forces victims to lose their identity, family, and any chance of a healthy childhood by means of coercion, physical abuse, rape, and starvation. Every eight minutes, a girl goes missing. They have only three days within which if a girl is not found, then she won't be found, unless she contacts the family probably a year or two later. Out of the 16 million victims of sex trafficking, we have 40% of underage girls. And the average age of a girl getting trafficked was nine and, between 9 and 12, and now recently we've had the statistics that it's gone down to 7. And that's the statistics I was telling you about. The buying of minors for prostitution has increased 133.3%. So she's Karishma, she's a survivor. She was a happy-go-lucky schoolgirl who attended school like many other girls her age till she got trafficked. She found herself in Delhi's notorious GB Road in the dark hell of her brothel. The first time I met her, just thinking about it made her go stone cold. And I felt sad to even made, remind her of that. And her eyes just widened into deep pools and we had to tell her, just forget it, just forget it. She couldn't talk about it. But all that she asked was, why didn't anyone tell me that this would happen? So this is another very major reason what's happening is girls are not aware that they can be trafficked into sexual exploitation, especially in villages, where, from where they get exploited. And this is what Missing is a campaign, as in, uh, missing is actually, there are four P's to UN's four P against trafficking, prevention, protection, prosecution, and partnerships. And there are a lot of NGOs working in prosecution and protection and rehabilitation. And, but prevention as a steady decimation of this information on trafficking is not done that well or not really uh, concentrated on. And as an artist, when I saw, I've been really working in the red light with my friends, I've seen the struggle they faced in keeping the uh, girls out, out, out of second generation prostitution. Let alone that, they couldn't let the young one who comes in new come in. So the struggles you've seen, you've seen the protection, you've seen the, the, them fighting with the police, with the, getting the traffickers nabbed, and you realize that the important stakeholder, the demand maker, the public, we are the demand makers. In our passivity of accepting that the girl is standing there and not doing anything, you are part of the demand. And anything which you do, any activity of yours, which might lead to a girl get trafficked, is you are a very active demand maker. And nobody is talking to the public in this issue. And that's what Missing is doing in its campaign. It's igniting uh, thought, it's making you aware that you are a part of it. So Missing started with me as an artist who stumbled or has been thinking of this for so long that I created this larger-than-life silhouettes of young girls set against the sky like black holes into which millions of girls go disappearing from the face of the earth. Because the figures are so astronomic, only a black hole can catch them. And that's the imagery. And this is the work which was launched at the India Art Fair and we got great reviews, but it was in a kind of a limbo after that because the Indian public art structure is a little difficult to maneuver. But before that, after that, I kind of didn't stop at that, and thankfully I found voice in the Missing Silhouette project, the stencil project. With that, we've been able to engage a lot of NGOs, a lot of uh, organizations, groups, whoever wants to participate, to make the missing silhouette across the country, wherever they want, and put this stencil up saying, end demand, end slavery. 
because um, it's, it's actually simple economics. It's all about demand. Where there is a demand, there will be a trafficker who will supply the girl. So what's the point in nabbing the traffickers? He will do it. So you have to talk about where is the demand coming from. So we have the stencil silhouette project, activism project, where girls, people across the country, NGOs, they make the stencil in their walls. And it's also something which they revisit. Because once it's on the wall, they don't forget it. And they all become ambassadors to the missing project and to the missing girls. And they say, ha, ye ladki jati hai. Ye nahi hona chahiye. And then someone asks them, ye kya hai? Ye tumne kiya tha? So then they become speakers for the missing girls. So it's like a recollection, a remembrance of them, as well as something which they use to talk more about the missing girls. We've done this in multiple spaces across the country. Uh, we have about, or because Missing is an artist project, I, I have around 3,000 stencils across the country today. It's not that huge if it was a bigger project, but I think it's still good for the way we are going. And it's a do-yourself kit, which anybody who wants to say that I want to do it can go online and do it. The project in numbers, it's not much, but it's still, I think, a long way for me as an artist to have reached, and I'm happy for it. But what was a feather in our cap is that I had crowdfunded for a game, um, an app, actually, and I was going to create an augmented reality app to engage the public, because I wanted to use new age mediums for public engagement. And that led me to discover that there was this genre called Games for Changes which sort of made you play the game and understand the issue. And we, we got crowdfunded for it, and we launched it at the, in October last year. And um, the trailer is not playing. You have to play that trailer. And that's a little trailer of the game. short trailer there. So the game is the player here gets into the shoes of the trafficked victim and experiences her deep frustration and utter hopelessness at the situation. It creates awareness during the gameplay and drives action towards change. And uh, we have since we've launched it, we have now, it's actually changed the figure last, yesterday was 210,000 organic downloads with no marketing. It's, been, uh, it's across the world. We have the largest amount of players are in India, America, Brazil. South Koreans seem to love the game. I get a email, one email from a South Korean a day. And Philippines. I've had offers for translating it into French, Italian, Urdu, Persian, Turkish, Ukrainian, Russian. And everybody, the amazing response I'm getting from abroad because everybody's saying it's a very important game, and I would like all of you to download it. It's for free. It's on Android and on I iOS, and it's called Missing Game for a Cause. It's got an average age uh, rating of 4.2, which Google Play should love, and I'm waiting to see what I can do more with them. And these are some of the survivors whose stories are going to the game, and we're helping them in livelihood as a grassroots initiative within the framework of the missing campaign. Because till you don't work with survivors, till you don't work in the grassroots, you really can't keep your language that strong. It would be so, too superficial for me. And that's it just now. In fact, I've rattled on, and I don't think it's interesting enough. I'd love questions from you all. Any questions? Anyone would like to ask a question? Uh, so uh, we have an online question. Yep. I'll just read it out and you can answer. Uh, 
All right. So the question is, what's our best course of action if we discover a case of trafficking? Okay. So that would come under prosecution. So the best course of action is, of course, talk to the tell the police and call 1098. But they only take numbers if it's missing children. So if the child, if the person is above 18, then miss, uh, 1098 would tell you talk to the police. The police is still the best course of action. Anyone else would like to ask? Thank you for your very inspiring talk, uh, Lena. Uh, my name is Deepa and uh, I work with uh, Prajwala, Dr. Sunita Krishnan. Okay. A very good friend and very inspiring person. She, she totally inspires all of yeah. us. And uh, one thing I understand from working with her is that there are three units that need to come together to fight this. Right. So that is the NGOs and yes. then there's the police yes. and then the government. Yes. So when these three are in alignment somewhat and right. you know the politics there as well. You know, that they, they themselves sometimes aid trafficking a lot, especially police you know, sometimes can be very suspect. Some of them are genuine. But is there anything you're doing to uh, help in compelling action uh, like from the government or the police? Is there something you're doing? So planning? the West Bengal Ministry has recently joined hands because the missing stencil, the way it went, uh, I think the, uh, the work, the way it's gone has shown changes. We worked a lot in rural Bengal, so they're joining hands to spread awareness on the issue through the stencil project. So I was just in Kultoli the other day, and now we were addressing 200 students and telling them all about how they should be careful. I totally agree with uh, Sunita that the police, the NGO, and the government, but that's been the triangle which has been age old. But then it's not stopped. I think what's missing here is the people. And that's what missing is trying to do. Because these three cannot do anything till the demand is there. And these three cannot prevent a new trafficker from standing because it's all about demand and supply. If somebody is going to make money out of it, you know an average trafficker makes 2.5 lakhs out of a girl in one year. So a girl who gets traffic from the village for 3,000 bucks, matlab mashi or a rishtedar, usually a trafficker, they say somebody your family knows because they trust you enough ki usko haath mein pakda do uske. The blinkers parents have. So they'll say, uh, mashi, meta, I'm taking the ladki, I'll take her, I'll give her a good job. So I'm, as an advance, I'm giving you 3,000 rupees or 5,000 rupees. By the time she reaches Calcutta, the man changes her hands for 20,000 rupees. Or sometimes, if she's pretty, 50,000 rupees. By the time the girl from Calcutta reaches a Bombay or a Delhi, it becomes one lakh. It's instant cash. They're making instant cash. And by the one lakh becomes three times in a year. And more. So it's a totally money-driven thing. What Sunita, my friends Ruchira Gupta, Urmi Basu, Shrabuni, all are doing excellent work because they're really working hard in the red light areas, working with the police. But there are new girls going every day. So Missing is a campaign, is talking to the public and it's telling you that you all are important stakeholders in this issue. If we don't cry, end demand. Like a click of a porn uh, movie, you're generating demand. Because where do you think those girls are coming from? You think a girl ever dreamt that she'd ever become a porn star when she grew up? No way. Who wants to commodify the, their body? Anyone in this room wants to commodify their body? No. It's happened because of coercion. It's happened because of circumstances. It's be happened because of something went wrong in her life which made her reach this space from which now she thinks she cannot turn back. So a lot of girls like, there's one girl here, Isma Tara, she was actually a smart girl and she was doing the one who did that embroidery. She was actually a smart girl, there was no reason for her to get trafficked. She got uh, kidnapped because she went to collect money in someone's house. Koi bola ki wo ghar se le lo. She went there and as soon as she went there, the door behind her shut and, so and something hit her on her head. Three days later, she woke up in GB Road. And she fought them because she was a really, like she knew that it was wrong and she had to fight them. They broke her legs, they broke her, they broke her limbs, they broke her, they couldn't break her spirit. 
because uh, two years later she managed to come back home. And she's one of the survivors whom we are supporting. But I'm saying is, there's too much of money being exchanged. And it's nothing to do with looks. It's nothing to do with looks. You are just a commodity. And we all are part of this. And we all, I mean, this is like me talking to 50 people. I'd love this to become a ripple effect. So wherever I get a platform, I'm talking, it becomes a ripple effect. And everybody becomes extensions of this conversation so that everybody can go and talk more and feel more and study more about what we can do in this issue. Like um, yesterday, I just read that Exodus Cry is another unit who's talking about, they majorly talking about the trafficking racket in Thailand. We all go for tourism to Thailand for all the wrong purposes. And we as women know, but we say it's okay. Why? It's a huge racket. The girls who get into Thailand are really, really in a bad shape. And I mean, that's what's happening is we are, uh, we are thinking it's normal. Things which are abnormal have now become normal. But now all that kind of scene is leading to more violence in society. It's a kind of a circle, and I am now in the process of doing psycholo with psychologists, pre uh, creating questionnaires, so that we can do a cognitive study, behavioral pattern study on this issue, because I think educators and policy makers need to know what's the missing gap here, on why is this violence increasing, and um, we are in the process of doing that with psychologists also. Any other question? Yeah. Would anyone else like to ask a question? Hi, uh, thank you very much for your talk. I just wanted to ask you one thing. I mean, we all are professionals sitting in this room. Uh, how we can contribute to this cause? That's very important. So I think now passive goodness is not good. Passive good means you're bad. Today, if you're good, you have to be vocal. You have to stand up for anything which is, standing, which is commodifying a human body. And you have to be more vocal about it. Like in Mahabharata also, we have that kahavat, na, difficulty of being good. So that good is now doesn't have to be passive. And if you are quiet, you are leading to more darkness in your society. We all have to become vocal. And if there are some things, you know, like even amongst friends, somebody makes a comment, and then you don't want to sound prudish, or you don't want to sound like... So, but it's very important to slowly, in your own way, to start sending out the right things, or what's right, what's wrong. Because there is something going wrong. Why the violence against women is increasing? Why is Kora Mangla uh, unsafe post 9 o'clock? It's, 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 re it's really not, it's unheard of. In 2016, you would have thought we would have already gone past that. And it's, 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 it's getting worse every day. There are certain things at play which is making certain behaviors normal, which are not normal. And I'm not openly able to tell you this, I'm just sowing the seeds in your mind, because till I don't have a study to prove it, I can't say it. And I hopefully soon will have, and I think where even the game is being a very important part of this, because with the kind of reviews we are getting, we have actually got a Swedish professor. Sweden uh, follows the Nordic module, where they have criminalized the selling, uh, the buying of sex, right? And that's really reduced prostitution. And, uh, but they're still seeing some other behaviors there, and they're studying it. And he's doing, a be uh, he's doing a study of our game to tell us what is the gamer saying, what are the reviews saying. So we'll have something more concrete coming out of our study there. And we will soon be doing a massive Kickstarter for the game with the help of some more gaming community in the West who think our game is really important. And that's why they gave us the indie game in India last year. And uh, I hope that next time or soon, I'll be able to tell you more concrete, um, I mean, what we have done with Missing, other than spread awareness. But at the moment, it's slow and steady for me. But you know, it's like, don't be silent. Cry and demand. Say I'm, about, I'm, a, I'm an abolitionist and say it strong. 
I mean, we all have beautiful relationships in this world of both genders, and we all have to respect humanity. So I won't say I'm a feminist. I think I'm just a humanist. We just human. We are just humans, right? We're talking to each other about basic rights of a human body. Just feel for the girls. I mean, I don't want to get much. Tell me, ask me something more interesting. Anyone else would like to ask a question? Do you all usually okay. have more questions? Or um, just <laughs> yeah, I have a question here. Yeah. All right. So, um, why do you think there's a lethargy within the government and uh, policy makers to kind of crack down on this more heavily than what they have now. I think the government is occupied with lots of other issues. No, so for example, you mentioned I'll tell you why. GB Road in because Delhi. Because the people are not making a loud enough noise. It's when it becomes a social fabric that it reaches the government fast enough. And we are not making a noise about it. Um, in Delhi, the India Today, I just read it on the flight, since Nirbhaya, the rape cases have increased. So it's not that the government is not doing, they are trying to nab. Probably there are more cases being reported. That also could be an issue. But still, they are there, they are increasing. Like, I'm still in the process to tell, I hope I could give you more data. But I'm hopefully going to get there soon. But what I'm saying is, it's abnormal what's happening. And we all have to wake up to that fact. Until you don't, if you let things like that breed in your own backyard or in your own side street, it's not, it's not long before it comes and hits you to the fact that you can't step out at 9 o'clock because it's dangerous to go on the street. So these are the things which come and affect you. And it could get worse. Like you had the Bangalore mob case, that mob which came and violated or assaulted a group of ladies on the streets. I mean, the whole of India was horrified, the world was horrified, but it happened. Why do you think that happened? I'd love to ask the men here, yeah, why do you think that mob assault happened? One is because people think, okay, one is because they think it's an acceptable thing to do. And secondly, uh, there isn't, uh, no one's going to hold them accountable. So our, Nobody was holded our, our legal the systems are lax enough to let a lot of this go through. And even if people are caught, then uh, it's the lengthy procedure in itself, you know, denies justice to whoever has been assaulted. So yeah, fine. But I'm saying the first thing what you said was like, they thought it's okay to do it. Now that's horrific. Now, that's another thing I want to ask you, what drives them to do that? And why is this getting, why is this increasing? Why is the appetite gone wrong? Can I just get that answer? What's leading to that appetite? Is it something which one is seeing digitally? Posters and ads, don't do this. Posters and ads is what the whole population see. It's not posters and ads. Everything. So you know what this uh, gentleman in Kultoli, this where we are helping girls, I said, this increase kyu ho raha hai? So he says, Didi, aaj ke onek jinish, lot of things are happening on the mobile phone. Lot of things are happening on the mobile phone. Young men are luring girls and making them watch things. But that's happening where they are coercing them. But beyond that, a lot of unhealthy appetites are being kindled by unhealthy viewing of things. I don't, we can't say it openly because I might sound like a prude, but things which are not normal, which are actually commodifying the human body, which is leading to a very, very serious issue where our roads are not safe post nine and where there are rapes increasing. So, I'm in that study, but I would like this to be something which you all think. And I think it's very important for us to be, stop being passive good. Like, um, I totally believe in the fact that we all as women are also very passive about certain things, though, do, though we don't like it. I believe there's a very uh, 
there was a whole article where young girlfriends are not able to keep up to the demands of their boyfriends or what they are demanding of them because of all what they are seeing in some sort of a digital format abnormal stuff which is driving them to be more rude more rapes so there is something totally as true here so though the government did try to ban porn as soon as it came into the into power because the, but then we, people all shunned them they said how can you stop our right it's my freedom to watch it right remember and momently and then they all had to bring it down then the government had to be quiet about it but then they can't just do that without they prove it so data statistics understanding will go a long way so even me i can't say this openly here but i hopefully i'm me reach i'm trying to move that way because again i am talking to the public my whole campaign the missing campaign is all about igniting empathy it's about igniting thought it's about telling you that you're important stakeholders in this issue and everyone who ignores it becomes a part of the demand in your passivity in your clicking of the mic of the mouse on a certain image which you shouldn't be which which you think now it's normal to watch and uh, it it leads to demand every click leads to a demand you know that you know with flipkart <laughs> you know how important the click of the mouse is right and and where there is a demand there will be a supply the traffickers will all be standing there so why should you go gunning for the traffickers i mean no, that's I, there can i, mean, I add something huh. to uh, the question that you asked it's a double edged sword actually it's not just to the fact that our public policies are weak there's also immense public apathy so while the legal system has the lethargy or the police has one stance or the other even if you see in our homes for instance there are several people working as helpers you know whether you refer the, to them as cooks or maids or who you have if they come in with a 10 year old girl and you will just see that a lot of us ignore the fact that a 10 year old girl is sweeping your home you know or a 14 year old girl or a 13 year old girl is helping our mom but these are things that we don't realize so yeah, for me yeah put them into the, school put them into school yeah. see nahi i will fund her school find a nearby ngo where the child can go to school like I, it's very cheesy to say this but be the change you wish to see it will all happen by each one of us but this is a huge thing the girl ratio is huge the average age of a girl getting trafficked is dropping to 7 there's an increase in 133% these are all stats so this is really huge and this is something which we all have to address and missing is a campaign is trying to do that in a bigger structured in a structured way and i would really go into data collection now and study studying behavioral pattern and cognitive study you know into what makes people behave in certain ways and hopefully we should have uh, data soon which leads to something more concrete like bachpan bachao even kalyash satyarthi da is also doing the same thing bachpan bachao mein he is now going anti trafficking lot of people are doing that because uh, pre uh, prevention in prevention comes awareness and the awareness is a huge space to talk to like we all know ngos are doing so your your friend sunita is working there in hyderabad in that area so you say to the good people are doing their work there and we all leave it for there which i don't think we should now and uh, see is there any address or contact to comp uh, regarding compliance separately Sorry. for each and every woman so we are facing a problems in day to day life right so is there any uh, address to complain see no i'm talking about girls getting trafficked right huh. so a missing girl gets reported in 1098 you're talking about that yeah so you said na in 9 o'clock about 9 o'clock we can't able to survey in the kauram mangla so so that's a thing i'm saying so we women are working there right. so if we face any problem there is there any uh, yeah i am not so good with this but anybody else who can answer i think it's the police because this is because we can't able to come and we can't able to come front and we can't able to explain what are the problem we are facing So, if we have any address or link, we can send a mail or we can do something. I think it should be the police, but beyond that, but we, we can't know. expect police in that time, right? 
So there we can't expect the police at the time. So if we are facing the problem, we can't search a police or someone else because no one will come front and they will not help us. So if we have anything else No, see, nowadays a lot of these apps have come out which you're supposed to ring immediately. I don't know, there's so many come out now. After Nirbhaya, Nirbhaya is your number. Yes, an amazing policeman we met just now in Bombay. There's a Nirbhaya cell. I think a Nirbhaya cell has been made in every city and they are very good. So you should have the Nirbhaya number on you. Keep it with, uh, everybody should have it. And I think there are more apps which are doing this. Immediately after the Nirbhaya case, Delhi had an app. I know Sheila Dixit had taken out one. But Bangalore related, we'll have to look for the local numbers. Okay. It should be more Bangalore related, so you'll have to have local. Thank you. Uh, how do you target communities that look at prostitution as a means of uh, livelihood? For example, there's a bunch of communities in India that raise women from childbirth and their entire focus is that you will be the sole breadwinner of the family where the eldest daughter takes over and then the younger daughter and younger daughter and younger daughter. That's the uh, prostitution as a generation thing. As a, as a means of earning a livelihood, like their entire village or their entire community yes. is known for that. Yes. So, so people come across borders. So that's the patriarchal structure. Uh, this is a nut community. It's where three, four. There's there are quite a of few of them. So what happens is, is actually it's all about patriarchy, right? It's all about the men who says, who don't want to work. And it, it happens under the thing of tradition. So a lot of things have to be broken. So in the nut community, we've had people who wanted to break from it. And uh, she's had to face a lot of flack, but she has now helped a lot of girls come out of it. But in, uh, this was on the border of uh, Bihar and uh, Nepal, where I saw a 13-year-old being all decked up by her mother and given uh, lipsticks in her hand. And she thinks, wow, she's looking so beautiful. And she's sitting as a commodity. And it's so sad when you see that. And the mother is hovering on in the background. But that's all because that whole community believes in that. The men don't work. And they are living off that, the things. So the girl gets into prostitution at 13, 14. By 25, maximum by 35, her body is wasted. I have nothing more to say. A body is wasted. So there was a story of a trafficker who dumped the body of a lady whom he had trafficked extensively to the point where she, her body had wasted. So he couldn't use her anymore, so he dumped her in a hospital. Now she's come back to Calcutta and now she's helping second, you know, prevention and creating awareness on the issue. Wasting of the body happens. And this happens in all societies. It's nothing to do with just the uh, lesser whom we think. It happens in all sections and segments. See, I've grown up in Calcutta, born and brought up. So, uh, Park Street is a known place for me. But actually, trust me, in the evening after 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, there are uh, girls standing everywhere and they are being picked up by cars and police is completely silent about the fact yes. and uh, they are, it's a complete racket and they are taking money day in and day out. Yeah. So it's, I mean, I just that's wanted to understand, scene. yeah. That's the scene. So that's the scene which we've been seeing and they look hunky-dory, they look beautiful and they look as if they're standing there because they want to. I'm not saying there might not be a percentage who's thinking this is the way to make money. There are there. So I'm not talking for all of them. And there has to be a whole process because before it becomes legalized in any space. Till they don't get proper... Uh, so Germany, it's legalized. I'm just taking a little step further. So there was this person who'd worked in a legal brothel in Germany. But she says the Johns never come in the main door. They'll come from the back door. And in the name of that legalization, there's so much of violence happening there, so much of substance abuse happening there, because anybody who is selling their body cannot remain sane. So they have to have substance abuse to go through the whole rigmarole, because there are rents they have to pay. They have to have those many customers. They have to give the pimp that much of money. And they are in this whole cycle where they can't get out of it. And so there's also substance abuse happening. 
So she says in the name of legalization, there's so much of filth and things which is happening under the government's nose. And the government becomes the pimp because they are taking taxes of your earnings. So in India, it's not, le it's not legal, but it's not hard, right? It's, we've not decriminalized uh, buying of sex. So that's why you still have people buying it. And the, ab the above picture is what you saw. But there's a whole understory happening there. So we all, I'm again taking you back to the fact that the girls are only standing there because there is a demand for them. But there is a pimp somewhere lurking in the background of that girl who is watching her. I'm telling you, don't think otherwise. In America, there's a road and a pimp is like, he's a dog. Ye meri territory hai, oh, aapki territory hai. And us territory mein jitne ladkiya khadi hai, they're all his. You can't see them also. And the pimp stands on the footpath and the girl stands on the road. If she has the cheek to come onto the footpath, he's gonna, because a lot of psychological stuff plays a role in this. They totally break you mentally to the point where you don't even have any say, any word. Branding is so different. They brand you. It happens. It's happening and America is increasing. All because of the industry which we don't want to name. But it could be that. But we all have to make us, we are in the, a lot of people are in the process of studying this. A lot of people are. There are a lot of good people who are trying to understand this. And, but the public who's an important stakeholder has to rise. Hello. Hi. Yeah, uh, someone asked the question, no, ladies helpline. It is 1091. One you can save nine it. Yeah, 918. You're in, in Bangalore? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. For the you. Bangalore, 1091 is the ladies helpline. Is the ladies help number? Ladies helpline. She's hurt? I don't know. You're saving it? No, thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, one more doubt I have. Uh, as you told, all the missing girls, is pushing to the prostitution. Yeah. But I read somewhere that some of the children are pushing for the begging mafia also. Yes, yes. And some of them for the organ sold. Yes. Like kidney and everything. Yes. So it is there. It actually. is there. Trafficking is all kinds of trafficking. Labor, in, in, in labor where they need small fingers. All that's happening. But I, as an artist and as an activist, I, am, I want to talk about sex trafficking. Because for me, it's the, if I talk about all trafficking, then my whole language will have to become more like an NGO talking about anti-trafficking. The whole language what I'm talking about here is buying and selling of a human body, commodification of a human body for sex trafficking. And I'm concentrating on that as a missing. I totally agree with you that missing is happening and boys are getting missing. So it's not that only girls are. Uh, if you okay, so I will share one experience, okay, which is my own experience, okay, okay which was happened in my village actually. Uh, when we were in uh, almost seven or eight years old, okay, we were studying in first and second standard. One girl near to our no house only, she missed it, missed out suddenly, and uh, she was in the joint family. She was in a joint family and no one was bothered to know, uh, take her to the you know, police station complaint and all those things. They also know sir, somewhere near to the house or village and they left out. And after when I came to 10th, okay, when I was in 16 year, she came back. Suddenly she came back and along with the two people, they came in the car and car was registered as a MH, Mumbai one. Okay, and she was there for two days. And she given foreign currency to all her own no, house people. Foreign currency. And no one was aware of that it is Indian currency or foreign currency. That much of no uneducated people was there. Then she, uh, she, she was there for two days. And I met with her actually with her. And I uh, no, called her as a car something like that. She came and she talked me nicely. And she was well dressed that time actually. She was about her some 28, 30 years old girl. Uh, no girl. Again she went back after two days. And when I was in you know, MSc or something, okay, when I was in uh, 26 year old, she came back again, okay, with the you no know, very worst situation with the police. 
and she was felt no she was no uh, with a hiv and she is died in one or two months okay then we came to know that so she was in the uh, trafficking actually she had This got trafficked a, when she was a child yeah yeah how old was she 16 no she was around, she died around some 30 32 years so no, when did she get trafficked uh, she was around some uh, 16 years 16 ha huh. but we are not aware of that she was get traffic or she missed out actually so that's what again i'm saying see it's some somebody in front of your nose got missing and it's like we all let things happen around us without being curious i'd say be curious curiosity is not going to kill this cat <laughs> this cat we have to get more curious about what's happening around us so she went at 16 she came back with money I'm sure everybody must have wondered where she's getting that money from. No, still I'm surprising that she came back when her no 26 age or something like that. She was came. She was there for two days in her home actually with the two guys as came along with her. Why can't she disclose that she is into that no field actually? She somebody probably, should, should help me or like no, something like that. No, she probably must have not been able to. If those two people came with her, it's like. I think the very fact that they let her even come back home and be there for two days must have been huge. So I mean, we are as a as I don't know, we all are so passive in a way. We have to stop being this passive about situations. I mean, investigative journalism is big, and a lot of people who want to be photographers. I believe there are a lot of photographers here in Flipkart who are amateur photographers. It'd be interesting if you know, uh, not even any anything. I think I'm uh, investigative journalism or life stories on any topic which you like would be an excellent exploration for most of you and us. It would help everybody to know about anything which you see uh, untoward. Am I over time? Thank you, thank you, Lena. Thank you. So uh, here's a little something from us. Thank you so much. Thank you for this eye-opening talk, and I'm sure uh, many more people will go home today with these questions on their mind. Yes, just think more. I've just sowed the seed, and you can sure. take it further. Thank you so much for listening to this. So thank you, everyone, for attending and being a part of our uh, initiative to give back to women. as a part of our women's day celebration so uh, don't forget to take your snack boxes and uh, if any of you are uh, interested in helping out but don't know where to begin you can uh, there are a bunch of links and phone numbers here so this is a good place to start on this whiteboard and uh, if you need even more you can get in touch with the internal comms team and uh, if you are uh, passionate about the supporting these causes you can also in start a conversation with deepa she has always uh, been very supportive of uh, pro women causes so thank you everyone and have a good evening